Hello everyone, welcome to Vplay TV interview. Today with me is uh, Mikhail Michaelele Bill. We're glad to see you here, by the way. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. One of our first game as Godsend, uh, our debut game, so it feels really good. So I'm happy. You're in nice shape, by the way. Thank you, you mean... Physically. Oh yeah. Yeah, because uh, I know that you've lost some weight. Yeah. You've said that losing weight is connected with the player's shape while playing games, uh, Counter-Strike. So, uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, the thing is, uh, two years ago I, I really needed a change in my life because I was in a, in a loop of constant junk food and just uh, being very unhealthy. And I think my, my, I was, my weight was around 106 kilograms uh, at one point. Wow. So um, I didn't have any energy or anything and then one day I just started, okay, now I'm gonna go full crazy mode and just work out and get in shape. And I lost, um, in two months, I went from 106 kilos to around 74. And then uh, it's, um, what is it, 32 kilos or something in two months, pretty good. And then I started to build muscles and I was up 79 uh, kilos in muscles. And it's, it's really important for you. What's your right now? Well. Right now I've been sick for a while, so I've been losing, I, I didn't work out for three months. Mm -hmm. So it's like 74. 74, okay, yeah. that's nice. What's your diet? My diet was just uh, a, scheduled, a scheduled time of when I should eat food. And then I ate pretty much anything, except under these two months. Then I was just eating really good food, healthy food, a lot of salad, uh, a lot of rice, chicken, you know. Your cousin Benjamin played Quake a lot yeah. and played it good. Yeah. He had influence on you. Do you know him? Uh, personally, no. No, no. I mean, uh, as a player. <laughs> as a player, uh, we've seen some highlights. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, he is the only one in the in our family that has been a pro player mm -hmm. in, in a computer game before. So, I, when I when I like grew up, I watched him play a lot, and he was a uh, yeah, team captain of the Swedish Swedish national team at one point, and uh, he was one of the best players. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's it has it had a big influence on me. Didn't he want you to play Quake? <laughs> I mean, I tried to play Quake. The thing is, I was yep. so young. I was playing Quake a mm. lot. I was playing Quake 1 mostly, and then uh, Quake 3. But, I don't know. Then Counter-Strike came into my, my lap and I started to play it. Then I just got hooked and I've been playing Counter-Strike ever since 2000... No, what is it? 98, 99, somewhere. What does it motivate you today? I, it's my life. It's pretty much the only thing I, I know. Uh, no, but um, it's, it's just the best thing in the world. I can wake up in the morning and I can play computer games. And I'm super motivated, even though I've been going on for years after years. But it's a hard job. It's a really, really hard job. And it, and it demands a lot of your time, a lot of uh, pr private personal time with family, with girlfriend, with uh, anything. But uh, I love it and I won't quit yet. Yet. But when? Uh, maybe when I'm 50. 50, <laughs> 50, okay, that no, would be we, uh, we don't know. Guinness record, okay, okay, yeah. uh, I think. I'm like Zlatan, you know? He Zlatan, can, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Speaking about your life uh, and uh, competitive playing, do you have any traditions like, you know, Git Wright has uh, a teddy bear that he brings to, to Lance, and so he put him in front of his monitor, and that's like charm, some kind of, do you have something like that? Not really, to be honest. Um, I'm just very sure in what I want to do and what I, I need to do and how I need to handle different things, how, like, how I want to perform and everything like this. I don't have anything necess like necessarily strict in any way or doesn't have anything. I just, I'm just me and I'm always me and uh, that's the thing. So I'm just so no rituals road. like uh, doing something before I, the match. I, actually, lately I've been trying a little bit of meditation before wow. games. Yep. Uh, the first time I, I tried it was uh, just a couple of weeks ago when we played mouse sports and I had a, I had a pretty good game against them. So maybe it's maybe that's my my ritual. Or something. Have you tried uh, meditation before today? Uh, no, uh, I didn't. <laughs> that, maybe that's why I play so bad. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's but true. We won, so maybe. Uh, lately, uh, there are a lot of changes in rosters and people just switch organizations uh, and switch teams and some stuff. Uh, do you think that? Um, we're talking about um, positions and teams. Is it better to um, 
to switch a position and stay in one team or to switch team to have a, a s solid position like a uh, rifler or something? I don't understand this uh, switching teams, switching players all, all the time. For me, that's just nonsense. Uh, especially in the Swedish team, you can see the new generation. Uh, they are swapping players left and right and they take the same players to the same team before and then they kick... It's just a constant bad loop of switching players all the time. So they can never evolve as a team and, and that's a huge problem. So I don't believe in this switching teams, switching organizations. I mean, okay, organization, it doesn't matter. As, soon as, as long as you stay with, together with your team, it's a different story. But uh, yeah, this team switching I don't really support. When you lose a big game, what do you feel after it? Do you rage, do you tilt or something? How do you cope with it? The thing is, I've been playing for such a long time. It's losing, is, it has to be there. You have to be able to actually understand that you, you will lose games. You will have really bad games. You will have a really bad uh, month or weeks, you know, in, in your career. It just, uh, you just need to focus up and, and, and still try to understand that you just have to go with, walk through everything. You know? But before you got so experienced? Yeah, it's the same there. S same yeah, thing? So just I, since day one? I, yeah, yeah. The, people, I understand, maybe you're from the past rumors about me, you know. No, but that's just uh, what people think. I don't no, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, as you say, okay, yeah. we believe you. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Uh, you said that switching teams is not for you, but switching organizations, what do you think about it? I mean, it, it depends. Um, if your organization is treating you and your team bad, and you have something else that's uh, better and more supportive, then go for it, you know? It recently happened to us. Yeah. Uh, we left Smash. Um, I'm not going to go into too much of, of the details, but uh, we just didn't feel it. Uh, we just didn't have trust in the organization. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, this uh, godsend uh, popped up with an offer that we couldn't uh, refuse. So maybe Godsend, Godfather. You couldn't know. refuse because why? First of all, I know their owner, mm -hmm. Pronax, very well. I've been knowing him for a very long time and he understands Counter-Strike. He knows that it takes time to build a team, it takes time to build a proper game plan. Um, so he is not that stressed and he doesn't want to be uh, top five in three weeks, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. So we can actually get a little bit of time to evolve, you know, to go to play together and stay together. And that's important. What about Tier 2 teams or Tier 3, you know, when you've said that there's a huge, enormous gap between T T1 and T2 and yeah. others. What, in your opinion, happens and what, how can uh, organizations uh, close this gap and make them closer, those tires? The team just has to grind. We call it, we call it ELO Hell when you're like Tier 2, Tier 3, maybe Tier 4. It's, we call it ELO Hell, that you really need to cr grind and climb up the rankings. And as soon as... As soon as you have maybe a good qualifier, maybe you win against a couple of teams, maybe you qualify for the tournament, you win a couple, you win a couple of games there, then it's going to be a totally different story for you. Uh, but everyone, like, it's only one winner, right? Yep. For a tournament, it's only one winner. Everyone else is loser. So it's hard to get that climb uh, working. And you can, it's hard to get it, like, to find the climb. But you have to constantly grind, or constantly try your best, evolve your, your strategies, your game plan, and uh, everything like this. So, Counter Strike now has a lot of changes yeah. in it, uh, you know, patches and patches and patches. Uh, but what do you think should be improved, and what is broken? Yeah, I mean, what's broken is uh, the SG, SG obviously. Yeah. yeah, that's obviously. Yeah. But it's the same for everyone. Everyone has 15 rounds as terrorists, so everyone can buy it for 15. No, not for 15 rounds, but you understand what I mean. It's the same for everyone. Everyone can buy it. Uh, but yeah, the SG is a is a little bit broken. Uh, I just um, think. Uh, we need a total revamp of the ranking system. Because I believe that there is only, if you take like an open qualifier uh, for a tournament, for a big tournament, and let's say every team has to go through it, I can guarantee you that there is a lot of teams in the top 10 that wouldn't even be close to go through. Not because they have to play each other, but if they have to play different teams. Because there is a lot of unknown teams from Sweden, from Denmark, from, all, like, uh, yeah, from everywhere that they would just lose against them. I promise you that. It's, if, you, if you revamp, it's going to be a totally different story of who's actually top 30 or top 10 or top 5. Uh, Denmark is a birthplace to a lot of 
yeah. cool Counter Strike players, yeah. players. And what what's the secret of Denmark? What's why they have a lot of good in-game leaders, a lot of good uh, teachers that can actually teach uh, the younger players, up-and-coming players, to to evolve, to help them grow. You know, to help them understand and see the vision they need to see and understand. And that's something that Sweden is missing, but we used to have it before. Uh, but now it's missing, and uh, that's their advantage, I think. Is, is it because of the mentality, or, or what? Or I think the mentality is quite the same with Sweden. I don't know, maybe, but it's the leaders, like people... The leaders today in Sweden, first of all, we doesn't have too many, so the leaders we have, we have to be careful about. <laughs> But uh, in, in Denmark, you have like 10 in-game leaders. And if you have 10 in-game leaders, you have 10 teams. And then you, ha you can just pick and, and, and choose from a, from a very big uh, player pool. And then you can just start grind, grind, grind them up individually and, you know, with experience and everything. Should the game leader be a tactician, a genius, or he is uh, all about being a motivator? What's Both. Both, okay. Yeah, both. I've seen a Nintendo in your Instagram. Do you play, uh, do you spend time playing other games, not Counter-Strike? Yeah, I usually have at least one game that I'm playing outside of Counter-Strike because my girlfriend, uh, that I'm, I'm living with her, she has her own job. Mm -hmm. So when we don't have practice or when we have days off, I have a lot of off time that I can actually go outside or hang out with friends. But sometimes my, my friends also have, have jobs under these hours, you know, until that five. Happens. Yeah, and then I need to play something else. And I think uh, one of my biggest key in life or in the, my career, I would say, uh, is that I've never been grinding Counter-Strike for 15 hours. There are some points, some weeks that I do, like before big tournaments and stuff like this. I'm grinding my ass off. Sorry for this word. Yeah, it's okay. We'll just... Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, I always have at least one game. So right now it's Dota Underlords. Wow. Yeah. You've heard we've had a tournament on Dota Underlords? No, I didn't. So we had. Okay. <laughs> it's had open qualifiers, by the way. What? <laughs> I should know that. Sorry. Next time. Okay, yeah, sure. I wouldn't have time to play it anyways, but... But Dota Andrew Lords is a mobile game, or you play it on PC? PC. PC, okay. Yeah. You've said Korea, Korea, what's your biggest Korea goal? This is going to come as a little bit of a shock, because if you ask any CSGO player out there what goal they had with their career is to win a major. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, if you take 99% probably, it's going to say, yeah, I want to win a major. I want to be the best, top rank, whatever. For me... This is a little bit weird, but I want to win a DreamHack tournament. I don't care which one, as long as it, uh, as it is in Sweden. Uh, I, that's my biggest goal in my career. And the reason is, since I've been 10 years old, I've been traveling to DreamHack. As a, not as a contender, as a player. Uh, I've been co traveling there with my friends to just be playing in their uh, lands, you know, like the open lands and everything. And I've been, been there since I was 10 years old. I was at DreamHack two times per year in Jönköping for, uh, I think, for 15 years. So for me, it would mean a lot to win a DreamHack tournament in Sweden. Well, that's quite, that's shocking, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. Global Offensive is a current, ti current title. Mm -hmm. It came um, after 1.6. Yeah. Uh, but will uh, Global Offensive in future have a successor? Something that Valve will uh, release, that will... Like a counter like CSGO 2. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, Overwatch yeah. 2 or something like that. I mean, the thing is, now with this Riot, I can't remember, Project H? Was it yeah, yeah, that's something, something like, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember the name, but Riot uh, might release this FPS game, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's going to be a uh, Counter-Strike Killer. A counter yeah. for Counter-Strike. So Valve has to do something, and CSGO is pretty, pretty new still, I would say, because they're updating it a lot. Uh, in good I ways or in bad ways? Yeah, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> Maybe the op nerf was a little bit... But yeah. But um, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. When Valve introduced Molotov Cocktail, in uh, there was a huge hurt. Hurt. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts about it? What should they add a new title that uh, can change the game, like, in the same way? I don't know. I don't know, like Shields, you know? Uh, no? I don't know. That's a really tough question. 
Maybe Counter Strike Lele. CS Lele. What does it mean? No, it's my name and uh, uh, oh, okay, that's 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 <laughs> obvious. No, I'm joking. I don't know to be honest. <laughs> you know, in recently uh, people blame computer games for making humans violent, aggressive, and stuff. What do you think about it? Is that true? And when will this stereotype break? I think it's vice versa. I think uh, computer games change people because, like. I have a lot of friends throughout my gaming career that has been like criminal play uh, people that when they're gaming, when they're playing, they're just changing. Like they're, they're not focusing on anything that's like hurting or negative, you know, outside of the game. They're changing to be more positive because it makes them f fly, you know, li like escape the world that they're in, you know. So for me, it's different and that people are blaming Counter-Strike for people going into schools, murder kids, bombing different places, like that's just, they, they don't have anything else to blame. And since Counter-Strike or gaming in general is, is so big, it's easy for them to blame it. But uh, for me, it's just shit. I'm, I mean, I've been playing Counter-Strike since, or not Counter-Strike, like computer games since I was four, four years old. What was your first computer game? My first computer game was Bloodbath. <laughs> That's okay. Ironically, yeah, do you know it? No, uh, it's just a, about the topic that we're speaking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah blood bath. <laughs> it's an FPS game that you just use the mouse, and they're, they're like popping up, you know, and you're shooting them. It's a video game. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been quite a pleasure. Thanks for the interview. Mm -hmm. it was a it was a nice chat, and uh, I wish uh, you guys. All the good luck with your tournament and later on. Okay, so, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you.